This podcast is a short introduction to the topic of biodiversity. Please write that as the heading in your notebook. First thing we're going to deal with is the actual definition for what biodiversity is. Now bio, as you know, is, uh, has something to do with life or living organisms. Diversity has to do with differences amongst those living organisms. So we, we put those together and we get this definition for biodiversity, which is the number and variety of organisms. So how many organisms are found and then the different types of organisms that are found within a specified geographic region, so within an area. So biodiversity isn't just having a lot of organisms, but also that they are of different types. Now, the next question we want to address is, why is it important? Why is it something that we care about? So we're going to go through three different examples of why biodiversity might be important. Um, there are obviously more examples than this, but these are kind of the big ones that I want you to be aware of. The first thing is, is if we worry about um, preserving that biodiversity in an area, then we're going to preserve whole ecosystems. And by ecosystems, we mean things like the deciduous forest ecosystem, or the tropical rainforest ecosystem, or a desert ecosystem. An ecosystem can't exist without different types of organisms because they all depend on each other in different food webs and food chains and recycling of nutrients and things like that. So if we want to keep these ecosystems intact, we want to continue having um, the ecosystem that's in the North Shore of Minnesota, for example, on the coast of Lake Superior, we need to make sure that we keep the plants and the animals that are in that area alive and thriving so that ecosystem can exist. Otherwise, if we don't maintain the biodiversity, or the different types of plants and animals there, the ecosystem will fall, fall apart. The second important reason that we are concerned about biodiversity is because they do have, these plants and animals, practical uses for us as humans. Okay, so certain examples of things we use these species for. A lot of organisms are the basis of prescription drugs, so chemicals that they carry in their body uh, have led, or in their, their um, system, have led to the development of different prescription drugs. Um, for example, aspirin comes from, originally, the bark of a tree. So the aspirin that you take uh, for your medication isn't from the bark of the tree, but we got the formula for that from the bark of a tree. Tons of prescription drugs um, that we got from specifically plants, but also some animals as well. So that is a practical use to us as human beings. Secondly, um, we can use different plants and animals to genetically engineer our food. Most of the produce that you buy at the grocery store, so apples, oranges, tomatoes, lettuce, whatever, as um, genes in them, or genes in these plant, uh, plant products, that have been introduced from other organisms. Um, farmers are mostly familiar with this because we have moved different genes from organisms into corn and soybean plants so that they will be uh, resistant, for example, to certain insects and things that like to eat them. So if we don't have a wide variety of species to choose from, then we don't have many species to use for this genetically engineered food that we rely on. So having lots to choose from, having lots of different types is important because we can use those genes to help improve other organisms. And then the last thing is there is direct economic value in a lot of different species. Obviously we give money um, by raising crops for example or livestock and things like that but we also have indirect economic value for example, having an intact wetland system. So again, that ecosystem, that is the wetland system, like you think of swamps and marshes and things like that, is important for cleaning our water before it gets to rivers and lakes. So it kind of has become like a little um, water filtration system for different areas that have swamps or wetlands um, is the more technical term for them. So that is a value for us, that we do not have to clean that water on our own 
Instead, it's taken care of by the wetlands. So that's an indirect economic value. We're not actually using the products and selling them directly. Instead, they are providing some sort of value for us indirectly. All right. So with that in mind, these um, species that we need, I just want to point out to you some practical uses of species. And probably the most practical use is the ones you eat. So we're going to do a biodiversity count real quick here just to see how many species it takes you uh, to provide a meal. So our meal is going to be a hamburger that's complete with bun and condiments and things like that. So ketchup and lettuce and tomato, french fries, and then an apple pie. So like I'm thinking like McDonald's where you go to get a fast food meal and they have those little apple pies there for you. So I want you to think to yourself here just for a moment about all the species that is required to make a hamburger, again with a bun and all the condiments. How many species, plants and animals, do you need to make french fries and how many for apple pie? So just pause it for a moment and take a, take a guess. See if you can figure out what it would take to raise these species. How many it would actually need. All right, now that you've thought to yourself, we're going to go through an estimate of what we might need. So just for the hamburger, for the beef itself, you're of course going to need the cattle, which the meat comes from but also what the cattle eats. So any roughage, any grains that are fed to the cattle um, could be eight or more species depending on what they're eating and if they go out to pasture and things like that. Uh, the bun itself is made out of wheat as one organism but also sugar which comes from sugar cane, yeast which is a um, fungus, and then milk which obviously comes from cows. So that's four or more species potentially depending on what that recipe for that bun is. Tomato and, and spices are found in ketchup so we're at five plus species there. For mayo and mustard we need four to three species to do that. That's good. Uh, mayo for example has um, eggs in it and different spices. Mustard comes from a plant. It has different spices. also has oil in it which is usually vegetable oil. Um, a pickle is made from cucumbers, a little bit of dill, a little bit of garlic, and then the lettuce and onion. Each of those is one. So when you add those all up together, get at the minimum 29 species just to make your hamburger. So that's a huge number of species for one meal. Um, but remember I said we're also doing french fries and an apple pie. So we take those into account. French fries, you need your potatoes, you need some oil to um, fry them in. And the apple pie, you've got crust, which has again wheat, sugar, butter, vegetable oil, kind of like the bun. And your fillings, so apples, sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, lemon juice, they all come from plants. So when you add those up, that's a total of 12 species at the minimum. So when we add the, back up here, 29 species from the hamburger to the 12 species from the french fries and apple pie, we're looking at 40 to 50 species here all together to provide this entire meal. And that's just one meal of one day through your whole life. I imagine how much we depend on the biodiversity of the plants and animals on the planet just to feed us. And then of course, here's a little note at the top that we don't want to forget about. All the pollinators that pollinate those plants that our food is made out of. The decomposers that help to keep the nutrients moving for those plants. Brings our biodiversity account for this meal into the hundreds. So even little insects and bacteria in the soil are important um, in our biodiversity account. So losing those is just as important as losing the actual plant or animal that we eat.